In the previous video on listening, we looked at the need for a gradual build-up of the skill in order to give our learners the confidence they need. In this video, we're going to look at a parallel skill, which is that of note-taking. Of course, we could ask, if listening is already difficult, why should we add another skill, which we're going to do simultaneous, which is this business of taking notes? But the answer is that taking notes while you're listening is actually quite a natural response. And within an educational environment, if you look at students at university or students in the later years of secondary schooling, you'll discover that while they're listening to their teachers or listening to a lecture, they're taking notes. In the ISE exam, taking notes is relatively simple in the lower levels. So if we go down to ISE 1, then you're going to be taking notes about very simple facts, about numbers, about dates and about quantities. And so the key here, first of all, is to absolutely clarify to all of our students that when they hear such things, numbers, dates, quantities, it's really, really important that they don't attempt to write them down as full words. Don't write out full words, do use abbreviations. But then, of course, we have to say, which abbreviations? Well, ultimately, each student has to devise their own set of abbreviations for the numbers and quantities that are typically going to come up, not just in the exam, but in real life. But in order to start them off, what we can do is read out very simple things like uh, 20 years or seven months or eight weeks and ask them to talk to each other and decide how they would write this down in terms of abbreviations. The number itself obviously is easy, but what abbreviation do you use for the quantity? We can do this and then get students to practice and then get them ultimately, as I said earlier, to devise, devise their own system so that each student has a completely personalized and a completely internalized system of abbreviations that they're going to use for numbers and quantities, dates and simple facts like that. Once students have devised their own systems, obviously we need to give them regular and abundant practice. This doesn't mean that we need to occupy 20 minutes of every lesson dictating numbers and quantities to them. But five minutes at the beginning of any lesson or five minutes at the end of the lesson is enough in order that they practice this skill. Try this for yourself, for example. As you're listening to me now, write down the following. 70 years. 24 months. 200 kilometers an hour. Three times a day. OK, this is easy for us but it's not easy for most students, especially students working at the level of ISE 1. They regularly confuse 15 and 50, 13 and 30. And it's only through this regular practice that we can give them at the beginning or at the end of any class that they can actually get skilled at taking notes with these numbers and quantities. However, as we move up, from ISE 1 and into ISE 2, we need to get beyond simple numbers and we start, need to start to write down actual facts. So how do you write down something which is a concept? For example, how do you write down something like, a giraffe is five meters tall? How do you write down something like, giraffes live for over 25 years? Or how do you write down, Giraffes get most of the water they need from plants that they eat. This is the next stage in teaching this skill of taking notes while you're listening and the answers that students might come up with could look like this. Nobody would pretend that taking notes while you're listening is easy. Quite the opposite, note-taking is a difficult skill. But that's why so many universities on their web pages now offer guidance as to how to take notes in lectures. And that is why note-taking is part of the independent listening task in the ISE exams.